Hi guys, welcome back. This weekend I was shopping with a friend for her very first like makeup products that she got ever, like ever. She's a very natural girl. She's super naturally beautiful and she wanted to try some makeup because she's always like, I love your makeup, it's so cute. I wanna do my makeup too. Let's go to Sephora. So we did, we went to Sephora. And we had a great time. I had so much fun like helping her pick out her first products and you know kind of cater whatever cater the shopping experience to her needs and desires. And one thing I noticed was a lot of the things she was telling me about and like why she couldn't get into makeup or really enjoy it um, were things like I'm like oh yeah well if you have this problem just do this you know things that like I guess I know through trial and error of doing my makeup a lot. And I was like, this is a great video idea. I need to make a video talking about makeup tips that I wish I knew sooner. So this is very exciting for me. And these are things that I was telling her and she was like, I literally would have had no idea. So I have a few tips, few things, um, short video, not too many things, but these are just things that popped into my head and I think if I think of more, I'll make a part two. Anyways, let's get started. So number one thing she was talking about was how she doesn't like wearing foundation or like a base, but she can't get her makeup products to blend well or look good or like they look patchy or that just something is missing. And I, I was like, even though, even if you have the most perfect skin and your skin is amazing, having some kind of base, whether that's like a tinted moisturizer, a tinted sunscreen, foundation, like a BB or CC cream, like something as your base, kind of give yourself one main color or one your one layer of something there that is going to make the hugest difference in terms of like having your makeup look really seamless having everything blend super well i don't know how to describe it but like even if you get something with little like very little coverage it makes a huge difference just having that base layer on before you go in with all your other products you try that out if you're struggling to get your makeup to blend well it really does make a difference like I, I swear like you just gotta try it the minute I started wearing a foundation even though I felt like oh I don't really need it um, my makeup game this was so much better next thing that really really made a difference for me is doing my makeup not necessarily on what's trending on what everyone's doing like i love trying out trends but not every trend is going to work for me and especially with my face shape and like my my complexion and my coloring not everything is going to look good so i think i really got into the pink blush trend but i'm realizing okay i have like an olivey warm undertone and i look a lot better with like a peach or coral blush and not a pink blush like or like a warm pink and not a cool pink so it really does make a difference uh one thing i would suggest is like figure out your face shape i think i'm gonna make a video on this but like figure out your face shape i actually still struggle to know what mine is like i feel like it's square sometimes i feel like it's round maybe oval i don't know but figure out what your face shape is Figure out maybe a celebrity lookalike that you have. Like once you find out, okay, I have a round face, start looking up like contour for round face, blush placement for round face, celebrities with round face, like things like that, it's going to point you in the right direction of how to be applying your makeup. Because some people are like, ooh, apply your blush like way up here for a lifting effect. But really, like people with like a naturally like lower set and rounder, like cuter cheeks, they're gonna look better with like blush kind of in a C shape or like on their apples of their cheeks so it really makes a huge difference like make sure you're like looking up how to do that uh, again there's just so many resources online another thing is look up your celebrity lookalike for me I get told I look like Meghan Markle a lot and I, I think that's like such a compliment because I think she's so pretty but I look up Meghan Markle's makeup and like tones that look good on her and kind of how she does her makeup and like what suits her best and I kind of try to emulate some of those things in my makeup every day and I think it's made such a big difference so look up you know your celebrity lookalike or celebrity that you think has similar features to you and try out how their makeup artist does their makeup because they know best and their job is to look good so just try to emulate what they've got going on and it's already gonna elevate your makeup so much more. The next thing and literally what the rest of this video is about is the magic of powder. Like I never would have thought that this would be such an important step in makeup. I don't feel like people talk about this too much. I felt like, okay, how come people didn't mention like how good powders are? But 
whatever here we are i'm telling you right now the magic of powders like seriously powders pressed powder baking powder loose powder setting powder finishing powder there are so many powders out there and all of them work in such different ways but all of them together literally help have like such a such a flawless sculpted amazing look so good so you have your base right you put contour on whatever you put bronzer you're like mm, okay something's missing it's powders now not saying this works for everyone but i'm obsessed with baking I have to use a baking powder. I'll go in, do my setting spray, go in with my baking powder, and I'll use it to kind of do triangle shapes here and here, and like sometimes here, and use that to brighten areas in my face. I use it to kind of carve out my contour in my nose. I like am a bad example today because I didn't do that. I have natural makeup on, but um, baking powder to brighten. I love the Givenchy Prism Libre ones, and I also love the Huda Beauty like pound cake, like those, so good. They're doing like yard work in my apartment, of course. Anyways, using baking powder to carve out, using a like pressed or like blurring powder to blur out certain areas. So I get texture on my forehead and around my cheeks and chin. The Pat McGrath uh, blurring powder or the Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder for like more coverage. Using those with a little powder puff, kind of just going in those areas, immediately blurs immediately smooths i love them for the under eye because i'll even if i put on a baking powder i'll still go in with pressed powder i know it's a lot of powders there's anything you can double layer and i feel like looks good it's like powders and different textures and types of powders speaking of melting your makeup together what i like to do before i actually do my powders is i'll do all my cream products so like concealer blush cream contour all that blend it out make sure I don't have creases and I'll do like a really heavy dose of setting spray and I like the Morphe Luminous one or the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless no Charlotte Tilbury one I don't know the name of it spray that on let it dry a little bit so it's not like soaking wet and then I'll go in with my powder and start immediately like under my eyes or like areas that I want to look super flawless because I'm telling you that powder makes the biggest hugest difference it looks amazing and it all the texture is gone so good literally so good just try it loud noises i'm just gonna try to wrap this up and stop filming for this morning because it's way too much yard work going on and the last thing i want to talk about is the patrick star one size powder foundation that's amazing i like like how i don't even have this to show you but it's the red packaging pressed powder using that with a little bit of like the real techniques um setting brush and going in as a finishing product is amazing. I don't know if that's real or not, like celebrities actually use that, but I've heard that's like a celebrity artist makeup trick to use that and go in and I use shade one, like zero or one, the lightest shade they have. And I'll go in and just kind of carve out and do like a little bit of highlighting around the center kind of T area of my face. It adds like the most beautiful highlight and finishing touches to your makeup. If you ever feel like you don't have enough contrast going on between your contour and like your highlight, using that is amazing and so natural and it's like, it makes a difference, but it's very subtle, but it, it's also not subtle. It's like dramatic. I don't know how to describe it. It's so good. I've used it a trick in like all my makeup videos pretty much. So I think if you've seen those, you know, but so good any questions links everything like that leave it down below i will get to you i love answering questions i love giving links out don't worry i will give anything you want so thank you guys so much for watching i'm really sorry about the noise um but yeah i will see you all in my next video bye guys